so I'm thrilled to say we have built an incredible community here at Tia Maurice Quick Fix. I'm always coming at you guys with some great ideas to make our lives easier, right? But today I'm gonna do something different. This is my life story. I was born in Germany in a place called Gelhausen, Germany. My parents, they were in the army. They ran away to be married at 18 years old. It's kind of like a little bit of a shotgun wedding, should I say. They had myself and my, my sister at 21 years old. I only know Guten Morgen, <laughs> which I think is good morning, which is probably terrible. Good knock, which means good night. <laughs> and nine which means no. <laughs> we ended up leaving when I was two years old. We moved to Texas for a bit. We didn't stay there long. After Texas, um, the family ended up moving to Hawaii. I like to say that I was raised in Hawaii. I just love everything about Hawaii. I remember shaka bra. If you are from Hawaii, you know what that means. I remember just smelling the pineapples, being on a beach. Every single weekend, we would camp out and I was always around food. My dad, who you all know, he did this video um, for me when I was pregnant. He would actually go spear fishing. He would catch eel and he would catch fish and he would bring it back and everybody would just, you know, barbecue. Tamara, don't kill me. My sister, she actually got stung by a man of war. I don't know why I'm laughing, but it's a sibling thing. <laughs> I just remember, seeing my sister just like, ah, just screaming and crying, and um, she had gotten stung. I also experienced my first hurricane ever in Hawaii. My parents would always have hangouts at the house, and they were, you know, doing kind of like a luau situation, which is where they put like a, a pig in the pit, um, in our backyard. <laughs> Go figure. We had this swing set, and you guys, this is not, I'm not even joking. There was a hurricane and the pig that we had in the pit ended up on that swing set. I'm like, oh my God, the memories of my first hurricane. But you know, that's Hawaii. And this is where it all began. <laughs> the acting bug literally bit me and it bit me hard. I remember watching and being inspired by several shows. The first show was Star Search. It was a show that was hosted by Egg McMahon. Destiny Child was on there, Beyonce. I remember saying, mommy, I wanna be on that show. My sister and myself, we were a part of a group called the Fancy Prancy Dancers. <laughs> yeah. We auditioned for Star Search. We did this, this dance routine and we didn't, we didn't make the cut. <laughs> I remember being so devastated, but as you can see, I didn't give up. I saw Lisa Bonet, who a lot of people don't know this, I am obsessed with. I remember seeing her on television and going, oh my gosh, this girl looks like me. She's really cool. I wanna do what she's doing. And my mom was like, well, you know, that's, she's an actress. And I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. I wanna do that. My mom put me into pageants. <laughs> Believe it or not, I am Miss Colleen. I am Miss Ford Hood. <laughs> and then my mom was like, okay, well then let me put you in print. You know how when you're looking in catalogs, and you see like people modeling like for Sears. <laughs> back to school stuff with the backpack and you see little kids like. <laughs> I was doing tons of those in Texas. And then I started to, you know, slowly get into like um, local commercials. I just wanted to just evolve. But unfortunately, you cannot expand and grow with your career in Texas. You'd have to go to Hollywood. <laughs> what my mom ended up doing and a lot of people don't know this, is during the summer, she had taken me to LA and she made a promise to me. She said, if you book something, whether that's a commercial, whether that's a television show, a guest spot, then I would move the family to LA. Tell that to a 10 year old or 11 year old, you're like, what? I was like, 
Okay, let's do this. One of the first auditions that I had was an audition for a commercial where I had to double dutch. I didn't know how to double dutch to save my life. I remember practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and I was not good at it. <laughs> So the time came where I had to audition. Small room, you know, clipboard or whatever. All right, Slate, say your name. Hi, my name is Tina Tiamari. I'm 12 years old, blah, blah, blah. And then they said, oh, and by the way, you don't have to double dutch. That's all you have to do is single rope. I was like, what? I never jump rope it's so hard and so fast. I was like, wee! I was like, oh yeah, this is so much fun. And I ended up booking the job. As soon as I booked the job, I was like looking at my mom. I was like, okay, mom. My mom was in the army and you can't just quit the army. She had to present her case to the courts. And she, I will never forget all of the, I don't know why I'm about to cry. It just reminds me of, um, if it weren't for my mom, I wouldn't be here. She worked so hard for us. Um, <laughs> I didn't expect to cry and I can't use pregnancy as my excuse anymore. Uh, sorry. Huh. I remember the day when my mom said, we did it. They let my mom go and she said, all right girls, we are going to Hollywood. They would only let one of my parents out of the army. So my dad actually had to stay in Texas for a while. He was later transferred back to Germany for another two years. Once you are um, no longer stationed or living on base, you're part of the real world, you have to pay for everything. We had moved from a house to a really small apartment in LA. We didn't have any money. We, I remember our Christmases were 99 cent star Christmases. My mom would like show us little tricks and stuff where, you know, if our jeans were too high because we were outgrowing them, she would just roll them up so they would be in style. I remember having these white shoes and my mom putting powder on them to make sure that the shoes, you know, I'm about to cry again. You just don't realize how hard things can be and then here you are. I think a lot of people think that success is so easy, but you know, you, you, it's hard and you start from really humble beginnings. I will never ever forget my humble beginnings. To make ends meet, my mom would take uh, graveyard shift jobs where, you know, it was just my sister, myself, and my brother Taj at the time. We would have to take care of my brother at night while my mom worked these long hours into the morning just to make ends meet. And then at the same time, make her days open so that she can take us to auditions. My brother Taj, he first started on a show called Full House with the Olsen twins. And my mom couldn't afford a babysitter. So um, my sister and myself, we would hang out on set. There was this one producer that was there. She said, wow, you, not only do you have this talented, you know, young boy Taj, you know, who was like maybe six years old at the time, who was killing it. She said, wow, you have twins too? Let me see what I can do. So long story short, my sister and myself, we ended up meeting a woman by the name of Suzanne Dupass. Suzanne Dupass is the one who discovered Michael Jackson, and the Jackson 5. Some people think that my sister and myself, we auditioned for Sister Sister. No, 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 no. Sister Sister was created for us. We went to all networks, ABC, NBC, Fox, and we just talked how I'm talking right now. And we had, you know, some sort of idea of um, a twin show, you know, we sat down with the writer, Kim Bass, shout out to Kim Bass. What up, Kim? He had created shows like all that. He was really popular with a lot of the um, kid shows that were very popular. This is all new to us. We had only been in LA for three years when this had happened. And <laughs> lo and behold, ABC at the time said, we want the show. Sister Sister started out on ABC, then it ended up on the WB. We ran for six years, over a hundred something episodes, and boom. We hit 
fame and success at such a young age. I was 14 years old when I did the presentation, 15 years old when the show got picked up, and I ended the show when I turned 21 years old. My mom always told me that your education is the key to success. She just thought that college and just learning and reading and just opening up your mind to other things was really important. So after Sister Sister, ended up going to Pepperdine University, graduated, whoop whoop, so proud of myself. But around that time, that's when I met my husband, Corey Hardrick. Sister Sister had ended, I ended up doing this crazy, terrible movie, please do not look it up. It's called Hollywood Horror. This movie was terrible, but I always said that I did it to meet my husband. He was like wearing Birkenstocks, you know? I was like, oh my God, what is this guy doing? I wear Birkenstocks, I think they're cool, but for some reason I just didn't think that they were cool on a dude, you know? <laughs> I'm like, what, what are those? Is that what the kids do now? We courted each other for about a year. My sister was the third Will, she hated it. <laughs> I would drag her to all of my dates with Corey. He won my heart. We ended up having our first kiss at a park where he asked me. And then that's when we became boyfriend and girlfriend. My wedding was incredible. I had the best wedding. It was so much fun. We got married in Santa Barbara at the Four Seasons. And the reason why we chose Santa Barbara is because that's where Corey and I, we would always kind of leave for, you know, secret rendezvous. <laughs> and if you guys watched my baby shower video, you'll know that Kenny Lattimore sang for you at our wedding and it was just beautiful. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I literally laughed walking down the aisle because I was so tipsy. <laughs> I remember just taking back the champagne, you know? And I was like, oh my gosh, maybe I've taken back too much. And I just remember just laughing and just smiling going down the aisle. They were like, you didn't look nervous at all. I'm like, yeah, because I had downed a, a few glasses of champagne. My dad was amazing. He walked me down the aisle. It was just an incredible, beautiful experience. And here we are, two kids later. We end up having Cree. Now baby Cairo, you guys got to meet her. She is the love of my life. She's smiling now. She has such a great personality. She's just so full of joy. 19 years together and 10 years married. The love of my life, my best friend. He gets on my nerves, but boy do I love that man. He's my heart and I feel very blessed to have him in my life. After Sister Sister, I ended up doing a television show called The Game, which a lot of people know me from. For five years, I played Melanie Barnett, one of my favorite characters that I've ever played. I worked with uh, Pooch Hall, Hosea. I'm gonna try to get Hosea. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a video with some of the actors that I worked on The Game. They love my YouTube channel, Brittany Daniel, Wendy. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. After The Game, I ended up doing this reality show with my sister called Tia and Samara. Had so much fun on that. Documented my pregnancy, we documented her getting married. We did that for three years, and then after that, I ended up doing a show called Instant Mom. I did that for three years. We did about 65 episodes. I loved doing that television show. I was also the executive producer. I ended up becoming an author. I wrote Oh Baby. I have my cookbook. Did some other books called Twin Tuition with my sister. It's out right now if you guys wanna check it out. It's so adorable. Then I wanted to show the world that I love to cook. I am obsessed with cooking shows from Giada to Bobby Flay to Barefoot Contessa. And lo and behold, I ended up doing a cooking show called Tia Mori at Home for the Cooking Channel and Food Network. And I just kind of made my presence in the culinary world. And that's how Tia Mori's Quick Fix kind of, you know, started. I'm a mom, I'm an actress, I'm an author, I'm an entrepreneur, and I have this social media following where I wanted to get to know my audience more. And what I mean by audience, are you guys. I remember saying, I'm a busy working mom. How about we come up with a show where I can inspire and to uplift people to make life easier? Cause life is freaking hard, man. 
and here I am. Lo and behold, TMRE's Quick Fix! I wanted to inspire people to get back into the kitchen. I wanted to inspire people to not be intimidated by life and enjoy life. You know, I want to continue to create amazing content. You'll continue to see me doing more movies, TV, producing things. And I am so forever grateful for my family because I did not get here by myself. I definitely have a community that supports me and uplifts me and I want to be that kind of community for you. All right guys, so that's my life story in a nutshell. Make sure you follow Tia Mori's Quick Fix for more episodes. I'll see you next week.